Today, significant improvements in mining practices and methods have reduced many of the risks historically associated with underground mining. However, this environment is unique and very different to the surface. So please, pay attention to the rules and procedures in our underground mine. All visitors are required to complete a short health assessment to ensure their fitness to travel in the underground mine. Inform your host of any condition that may prevent you from being able to travel in the underground mine. Ore is mined underground utilising the sub-level caving method before it is crushed and transported by conveyors to the shaft for hoisting to the surface. The shaft enables production rates of around 6 million tonnes of ore per annum, producing 50,000 tonnes of copper and 70,000 ounces of gold in concentrate annually over the mine life to 2026. As a visitor, you will be required to stay with your host at all times and follow all instructions provided by your host. Access to the underground mine is controlled through the use of an electronic tag system. This allows us to clear the mine for end of shift firing and to enable emergency personnel to account for everyone in the underground environment in the event of an emergency. You will be issued with a visitor's tag that you will use to swipe into the underground blasting area. Your host will be required to swipe their card immediately after yours has been swiped to enter the underground mine. You and your host will need to swipe out when you exit the underground mine. If you have never been underground before, please advise your host prior to entry to the mine portal. The underground environment is not for everyone, so if you are feeling uncomfortable about being underground, then inform your host immediately. The further you go underground, the hotter it will be. Avoid heat illness by drinking plenty of water to avoid dehydration. Small volumes of cool water every 20 minutes is recommended. If you start to feel unwell, notify your host immediately. The following personal protective equipment is required in the underground mine. Helmet, safety glasses, gloves, long pants, high visibility long sleeve shirt, reflective stripes and sleeves rolled down and buttoned up, lace up steel cap boots, hearing protection, respirator, self-contained self-rescuer and cap lamp. We'll now go through some additional information on how to use a self-contained self-rescuer, which is also referred to as a self-rescuer. As a visitor, you are required to know how to use your self-rescuer. No person is allowed underground without a self-rescuer and it must be with you at all times. Self-rescuers are capable of providing an oxygen supply of up to 20 minutes in the event of an emergency. We will now show you how to use the self-rescuer. Before using your self-rescuer, check that seals are not damaged and the case is not visibly cracked or damaged. A blue indicator circle indicates your self-rescuer is okay to use. A red indicator circle indicates it is damaged. To activate the self-rescuer, open the canister by pulling up the lever as demonstrated. Pull the device out smoothly in one go. Remove the plug from the mouthpiece. Insert the rubber gum plate between your teeth and then seal the mouthpiece with your lips. To tighten, pull the straps over your head as shown. Pull the nose clip apart. Place the clip on your lower nostrils to seal your nose and try to breathe normally. Pull the ends of the red band evenly toward the head straps until tight. Then put your helmet back on. It is important to note that if your breathing bag has not inflated, breathe out deeply several times. 
the humidity and carbon dioxide content in the expired air will increase oxygen production. Remember, you must only open the self-rescuer when instructed to do so by your host. Cap lamps are required by all persons entering the underground mine. The cap lamps aid in visibility for you and for others around you, such as mobile plant operators, to know where you are. You must turn on your cap lamp any time you exit a vehicle. Once issued with your cap lamp, you should first check it for any visible signs of physical damage, including the seals. Both bulbs must be operational. Do not attempt to use the lamp if you notice any faults and report any damage to your host. Ensure that your cap lamp is properly fitted to your belt or harness. Do not carry the battery pack of the lamp in your hand. Ensure that the belt is comfortably tight to avoid the belt becoming loose around your hips. Please ask your host if you need assistance to adjust your belt correctly. Let's look at how to activate your cap lamps. The on-off switch is located on the lamp itself. Adjust the beam of the lamp by pressing the on-off button as shown. The cap lamp signals act as traffic lights when underground. It is important to understand and observe the signals when required. If you observe an employee moving their cap lamp in a circular motion as shown, it means it is safe to move forward in that direction. On the other hand, if you observe an employee signalling in an up and down direction with their cap lamp, it means you must go away from the area immediately. If the signal is moving across from left to right as shown, it means stop where you are and do not move until you are given the signal to proceed. Ernest Henry Mining has in place an emergency response team who are trained and fully equipped to deal with an underground emergency. In the event of an emergency, the number to call on internal phone is 222 or on radio channel underground emergency. Stench gas will be released into the fresh air system to notify of an emergency. Remain with your host who will guide you to the nearest refuge chamber or to the surface tag board if closer. Some of the hazards you need to be aware of include unsecure ground, rock falls, vehicles, fire, explosives and firing, electricity and uneven ground, loose rock on the back or the roof, and you must never go under unsecured ground. To become secure, the back is fibercreted and bolted. Rock falls can occur in the underground mine from the back and walls. Even though you are a visitor, keep a lookout for cracks and loose rock. If unsure of something you observe, let your host know. Controls we use in the underground mine to help prevent rock falls include fibercreting with bolts to secure the ground and training workers in hand scaling. Visitors are not permitted to drive or operate vehicles or mobile equipment while underground. You will notice there is minimal room in the decline for vehicles, so traffic flows one way only. Vehicles travelling down the decline must give way to the vehicle travelling up the decline. If near mobile equipment, ensure you are seen by flashing your light and standing on the operator's side of the vehicle. A fire in the underground mine will generate toxic fumes. In the event of fire and smoke, use your self-contained self-rescuer and your host will take you to the nearest refuge chamber. Only personnel who are competent to handle explosives and who have a current statutory appointment to handle explosives signed by the mine manager are allowed to handle explosives. If you see unattended explosives, let your host know. The areas in which the explosives are used to loosen the ore are restricted. Prior to firing, barricades are erected in the work area to prevent unauthorised entry and remain in place until after the all clear from firing is issued by Pitram.
If a firing barricade is still in place, do not remove the barricade. Do not leave the safe work area. Do not enter the ore body. Authorised electricians are the only people who can perform work with electricity. While visiting the underground mine, be observant. If you notice an electrical hazard, report the problem to your host. The ground in the mine can be uneven due to the nature of the operations. Take care when exiting from vehicles by not jumping and by maintaining three points of contact when leaving the vehicle, as the ground may be rocky or uneven. Lace-up safety boots are required as they provide greater support to your ankles and help prevent injuries. The ore handling system consists of a number of conveyors and transfer points which may start or stop at any time. When operational, these can pose hazards to people in the vicinity. It is important to stay with your host and follow their instructions. Your host will be able to answer any questions or concerns you may have. This completes the underground visitor induction. As a visitor to the underground mine, your attention and compliance to our rules and procedures will ensure a safe, enjoyable visit. Your host will be able to answer any questions or concerns you may have. Welcome to the Ernest Henry Mining Underground Mine.